A lot of students lose precious moments in essay writing and in the section on list and structure to the wrong use of being, being, advice, and advice. In this lesson, we are going to learn the difference between these words and how to use them. As usual, we are going to be asking questions from past questions. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Numa Tutorials. And Numa Tutorials is an education channel on YouTube that is dedicated to helping students pass their exams in good grades. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please click on the subscribe button, like the video, and also share the video to your friends. Now we're going to start with the words being and being. Being and being. B-E-E-N and B-E-I-N-G. So overcome the confusion that you may face when you want to use them in your essays. Now, both of these words are the different forms of the verb be. B-E-E-N is the past participle of the verb be, and B-E-I-N-G is the present participle of the verb be. Simply put, B-E-E-N, being, always goes with has, have, or had in a sentence. It always goes with has, have, or had in a sentence. And B-E-I-N-G always goes with is, am, are, was, or were. Now let's start with B-E-N. B-E-N, like I told you, is a past participle of the verb be. It must go with has, have, or had in a sentence. Because past participles are always formed with has, had, or have in a sentence plus the past participle form of the given word. For example, I have given her the note. I have given her the note. Giving is the past participle of the verb give. And it goes with have. I have given her the note. Do you get? So because doing is the past participle form of the verb be, it must go with either has, had, or have. I believe that's clear. Now, let's see some examples. I've been working since morning. I have been working since morning. I've used been with have. She has been studying for the exam. I've used been with has in this sentence. He had been asked to take his study seriously before his results came out. In this sentence, I've used been with had. Now, let's get the word being, B-E-I-N-G. Like I told you, is the present participle of the verb be is the present participle of the verb be the ing form of the verb be and it always goes with are is was where and am these are the words that may go with the verb being in a sentence i hope you got that so that's the difference b-e-e-n goes with has had or have b-e-i-n-g goes with is was are where or am in a sentence. I believe we now understand the difference between these words. Now let's look at some examples that concern the word being. I am being asked to clean the house every morning. She's being asked to come to school early. In this sentence, being goes with is. His passport was being demanded at the embassy. In this sentence, being goes with was. Now let's answer this question from was 2019 past questions. Question 45. She hates dash. She hates dash. We have option A. To have been kept waiting. B. Having been kept waiting. C. Being kept waiting. And D. To be keeping waiting. The correct answer is option C. Being kept waiting. Being kept waiting. Now let's see why option C is the correct answer. Option A, to have been kept waiting. I've told you that have been or the verb been is the past participle form of the verb be. Now, the sentence is in the present or in the past. Is in the present. Is in the present. The verb hates shows that it's in the present. What's the past participle of hate? It is hated. The answer will not be option A because option A is in the past participle form. It's in the past participle form to have been kept waiting. So it's not the correct answer. Option B, having been kept waiting. I already explained to you that being here makes the sentence to be in the past participle form. And the sentence is in the present form. 
Now, option C, being kept waiting. And I said is the correct answer. Being kept waiting is the correct answer. The sentence is in the present. So the option you're going to choose should be in the present as well. Now, option D, to be keeping waiting is not the correct answer. Because when you say to be keeping waiting, it's not a good English expression. You have wrongly used the word waiting here as a noun. Now, let's see the difference between the words advice and advise. Advice and advise. When you want to give someone a recommendation on the best course of action, or when you want to give someone your opinion on the best course of action, that is advice or advise. They mean the same thing. But the difference is in the pronunciation and in the past of speech that they belong. A-D-V-I-C-E, advice, is a noun, is a noun. So you use it when you consider the opinion or the recommendation you want to give to someone as a thing. When you consider it as a thing, when you use it in a sentence as a thing, that's when you use advice. For example, can I give you some advice? Can I give you some advice? In this sentence, I've used the word advice as a thing. I've used it as a noun. Now, if I say, can I give you some orange? The sentence is still correct, just that the meaning is now different. So when you want to use advice, the one with a C, you should use it when you consider the opinion or the thing you want to say as a thing. Do you understand? Now, advice is a verb, so you should always use it as an action word. Whenever you see the opinion or the condition you want to give to someone as an action, as something you want to do, then use advice the one with an S, use advice. For example, I want to advise you. I want to advise you. Here, I've used the word advise as a verb. I've used it as a verb. I want to advise you. That means I want to do something for you. Now, I can replace the word advise with another verb. Let's say teach. Teach is a verb. It's an action, right? Now, if I say I want to teach you, the sentence is still correct. Just that the meaning is different now. Now, if I say I want to orange you, does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense because I've used now where there should be a verb. So when you want to use advice, use it where you consider the um, recommendation or the opinion as an action. Use it as a verb and advice. Use it as a noun, the one with a C. Use it as a noun. You understand? That's the difference. Another difference between these words is in their pronunciations. The one with C is pronounced advice. Advice. The C is pronounced s. s. And the one with S is pronounced advice. Advice. The S is pronounced z. z. You get so that's the difference between the words in their pronunciations. So that's the difference between these words advice and advice, advice and advice, being and being. All right, guys, this is where I'll end today's video. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you learned something new from this video. Please, if you did, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel if you've not subscribed already, and share the video to your friends. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye for now.